been nine days since I, I was doing the last vlog and now back home so what happened in the last day is I mean as I said in the second last day I just arrived in Spain that the N11 is super nice and the shoulder of that road is always over two meters wide but then on the last day basically from Girona to Barcelona that road is not so nice anymore basically the speed limit is always the same around like 80 to 110 kilometers and since the shoulder becomes narrower it just got way too dangerous and another problem on the N11 is since it's a kind of highway so they have that kind of cross thing so if you want to go somewhere else they just turn right and get out of that highway thing that creates a problem which is so normally i'm riding on the right on the right side of the road and then they create another road which doesn't lead to my destination so i have to change the lane from the right lane to the second right lane and uh, then after that cross i have to go back to the right lane again so basically there were just the times when you are riding in the middle of the road and on both and on your both sides there are cars driving super fast like 100 km per hour i have done that sometime in the last day like five six times until i think 70 kilometers away from Barcelona, there was a car who wants to go right and get out of that highway thing and he just ignored me until the last minute. So he didn't really hit me, but he was pushing super hard and I like to smell that time burning smell. So that one was really close and really dangerous. Uh, yeah, so I rode like 50, kilo 50 kilometers of that but with a lot of timing. So I think I was still in the Pyrenees area and uh, one problem about that kind of highway road is it's designed for the cars and it's super straight there isn't so many safety issues as on the mountain road and so sometimes there's a climb which is like seven eight percent for almost one kilometer you just have to climb and climb and climb until you hit the top and then you go downwards and then there's another climb very annoying and uh, also very dangerous because when you are over there and climbing very slowly all these cars they are driving 100 km per hour that's just it's not working so after 50k I, I arrived to the coast and uh, I thought it's finally over so there's no more climbing I'm sure about that and the road is going to get better because I was kind of in a city and I see a super street bike lane so that bike lane ends after like 500 meters and, since, and then I, would, I decided to get some lunch over there in a bar or a cafe place when I was over there having lunch I checked the GPS so basically, so basically after 5 kilometers I have to go back to N11 again and right after that moment I just I just completely lost it to be honest so after 10 days and over like 10,000 cars passing by me super fast and riding very nervously I'm pretty sure that I got the PTSD so even until today like 8-9 days after my last ride whenever I hear the engine of a car I still get like super I don't know just kind of angry kind of nervous and mad and all that and all that negative feelings so yeah back to that then so when i was having lunch and saw i have to go back to n11 i just decided yeah it's not worth it the first is super dangerous and with my like i don't know like mind situation or something i, I, I just weren't like mentally healthy enough to ride the last 50k and uh, secondly it was the saddle zone and until the last day uh, based on something i did wrong during this trip it's just I, I can't do it, even over those on the Aspen is not helping with the status or issue. And I know I would regret it, but still, I took the train. So for the last 50 kilometers, I took the, I think, and I think the R train to Barcelona. And I took a photo in front of the, in front of that church thing, I think like Sac, like Sacta de Familia or something. I'm, I'm so sorry for the pronunciation, but uh, yeah. So that's basically the end of my trip and now today 10 days after the last trip so i'm gonna talk about the equipment uh, to be honest i think this i think on this trip i just packed super long i mean i wouldn't call it super long but there were so many things that, that i didn't use and there are some other stuff that i really needed but didn't bring 
Yeah, so I'm just gonna start with the basic setup. There's a backpack that I always used for almost everything, like for school, for going to the supermarket, buying groceries and all that stuff. I do have a very small one, which I used three years ago on the Italian trip, but this time I just decided to bring a big one. And yeah, here's the bike. So I will start with the bags. And just to let you see the basic setup, and then I will show you what are in the bags. Okay, first, this is a handlebar bag. It's packed a little bit too big, but during the trip, this part is like, it's a little bit shorter, so it's completely inside of the width of the handlebar. And here you can see a tube of the water bladder. And there's another three bags. One of these on the top tube, it's a small one. And here you have a frame bag. It's yeah, it's big enough for a lot of things, but yeah, but I think I'm gonna upgrade it in the near future. I will talk about it later. And here you have a huge saddle bag. Uh, yeah, this one I think it's like 14 or like 14 to 18 liters, something like that. I mean, it's super heavy duty, and I just mm, I like this kind of bag. It's not this one is not perfect. I'm I think I'm gonna buy a new one, but. If you are doing backpacking, this one is absolutely a must. Okay, let me just start with my backpack to see what's in here. Okay, firstly, I got an action camera. It's a Sony X3000. I just bought it very recently. And the reason why I bought it is, first, it has a perfect ima like image stabilization. So it's a optical one instead of that computer calculated image stabilization like GoPros and all, all that other stuff. I tested last year when I was doing scuba diving and one to one comparison. One of these and another is the Ice J Cam, I think. It's not as good as the GoPro, but still you can see the huge difference with the image stabilization. I mean that's one of the reasons I brought it for this trip. And then you have uh, just a small tripod, very light and very useful. You can just yeah, hold it and doing hold it like this, like doing a vlog or just putting it at basically anywhere. And another reason why I'm using this action camera is, you see this one. I mean, it's not a watch, so actually it's a monitor. So when you are riding your bike and the action camera is on the bike, firstly, it's kind of awkward to press the button, and secondly, it, sometimes you just can't see whether it's recording or not. And with this monitor, you can do basically everything hand... Okay, it's not really hand-free, but just press the on button on this monitor and the camera will turn on. And then you can see the image on, on the screen. And when you press that red button, it will start recording. And after that, you just turn it off. It's super easy, super convenient. So this is the camera. And then I have my shoes here. Okay, this is the North Wave. I forgot the model name of it, but yeah, you can see the color is wears off a little bit just by doing this trip. And here is, I don't know if you can see this, but on this side it's very green and on top of it it's kind of white. It's mainly due to the sunlight on this trip. It's just so hot and so, so strong sunlight. I'm kind of regretted by like wearing these shoes but anyway the reason why i bought it is because the last shoe i had i used i mean it was a very cheap one like shimano something it cost 30 40 euros and i was wearing that doing the long trip i think 340 kilometers in one day and i had a huge hot foot issue and then i did some research online and people were saying so the soles of the shoe has to be a little bit harder it helps with the hot foot issue that's why i upgraded to this one I mean, but basically after the trip, I don't see this shoe just solved that problem. But anyway, it's a good looking shoe. It matches the color since all my kids are... I'm sorry about the noise. There's a train passing by. So, I mean, it matches the color of all my kids. It's green and just good looking. And the sole is... I think it's not 100% carbon because even the price is the same. That higher end one has a like more ugly, has an uglier color. So that's why I decided to this one. I think this is something like 80% of carbon, 20% of like fiberglass. I think. So this is the shoe. And then the gloves. It uh, it's a must-have when you are doing the long distance, like endurance bike ride. So this gloves also. The reason why I chose this is 
And by the way, this is a specialized, uh, I think called body geometry. I don't know if you can say it. Yeah, you can. Body geometry gloves. This one is for road cycling, I think. And there's another one for mountain bike. They were both great, mainly because of this pad. Yeah, you can see it's super thick and it's just, it wouldn't eliminate the numb finger issue, but it, but it would definitely help. And then it's my wallet. And then I have some other things that doesn't really belong to my backpack. Okay, here's a charger that I didn't really use, so I put it in the in the in the backpack. And I'll talk about these things later. And there are other things in the backpack, so basically it's the things I was it's really important to me, but I don't really don't need. It's like I don't know, like the keys of my house and you yeah, see the wallet and uh, just uh, like passport that kind of stuff because i didn't put so many things in the backpack it's mainly some really important stuff and the stuff which are kind of big but not really heavy i just i don't want to put too much load on my back compared to hot food i think back pain is even worse and so when i'm riding obviously i'm wearing these shoes so what would be in my backpack are these you see just i mean some kind of running shoes I bought it in Decathlon like three years ago in the Italian trip and I really liked this for one reason it's super lightweight and secondly like this upper this blue side they are just I don't there's like no form of it it's super soft so when you have a small bag inside of this one you can just compress you can just compress this shoe to a really small size and it's just so small that you can fit it you, it's so small that you can fit it basically into every backpack and the, yeah i just added this like i don't know elastic laces so it's easier to like get on and get off yeah that's basically for the backpack and then i will show you oh there are some and then i'll show you the small straps on the bike okay first i have the light here it's Oh, I forgot which light it is, but I, I didn't really use it that much, but I really like it. I'll put a link in the description. So it's a super light USB charge, you can see. And yeah, for the front view, I'm using one with Dynamo. I think it's something SP8 as well. I'm putting another link. I think I have already mentioned on this trip, I did bring the Dynamo, but I forgot to bring one of these. This one. Basically, it's kind of like converter of the Dynamo. It converts the electricity uh, generated by the view to something that people can use. That's why I never used this Dynamo on this trip. I mean, I think you can charge something even without it, but I just don't want to take the risk and and just bring up my battery pack, and then just bring up my power bank or even my phone. And you see, these are just all the cable. And here's the light. Okay, this light, what should I do? Okay, I bought it in China. It's very cheap. I think like less than 20 euros. But very, very bright. And when I'm riding in the evening, I, I just turn it to the low setting. And basically, all this electricity and all the cables are in this bag plus two power banks this time i brought two power banks one is 10,000 milliampere and another one is 15,000 milliampere hours they all belong to this bag and i do have some issue with this one because you know like two power banks plus all the cables and stuff is super heavy and so when you are riding you can see here is one velcro here on the top tube and there's another I'm oh, sorry, one velcro here on the kind of like handlebar thing and there's another one on oh, here another one on the top tube so when this bag got a little bit heavy and you are riding sometimes it just goes to one side like this because of the unbalance of the weight and this one is really really annoying way more right way more annoying than you think and just every couple of hundred meters i will just hit it like this put it in the middle and then it goes back and then i'll just push it again it's just Sometimes it's okay, but sometimes when there's all the car passing by and that stuff, you are just so tired of it. Okay, this is this bag. It's all the, yeah, you, all the like high type electricity stuff. And here for my cell phone, I have a quad lock. I'll put a link down below. I mean, I think this is just one of the 
best I don't know like fixation for your phone it's quite expensive to be honest with this and the case of the phone but it's worth it it did kind of fail one so basically my phone fall off onto the ground but I'm not so sure whether that's because of the fail of the quad lock or because it didn't put the phone on like correctly and here you have the mount for the Garmin it's firstly it's very long Let's just move this you can see the size of it you can see this in my hand it's really really long so I can see it better I mean at least it fits me and another thing is under the Garmin mount you have a GoPro mount so on the first couple of days I was using it basically all the time but one day I just lost one of the bolts over here I couldn't find it so that's so I just can't use the action camera anymore on the bike and it's kind of annoying and basically that's just yeah, the small stuff on the bike you see i mean this wheel they are coming from this bike the Canada lc 8010 so i do have carbon wheels at home but it's tubular so why am i using tubular on a long distance ride it just doesn't make any sense and, and here there's another thing this saddle is a sq line i think it's a german brand kind of expensive like 130 something euros there's not, not there's not so much things to talk about it's just it fits me and I have to buy it, that's it. Oh yeah, sorry. There's one big thing that I forgot to mention. The tri-bar. You see? So basically, these parts are from the profile design. And this part as well, very comfortable pad. And I also bought a 5mm riser. So it rises the whole handlebar. And I mean, without that, I could ride, I think, like 3 minutes on that non-stop. But that's really uncomfortable. First, I can't put out so much power. Secondly, my back hurts like hell. So for this trip, which I don't need so much aero advantage, I just want to be comfortable and at another position, so I don't hold the handlebar with my with my hand all the time and to avoid the numb finger issues. So this is racer and that and this tube thing, this hand rester, they are not from Profile Design. So the model I bought was a T2, and this handlebar goes like this and it goes up a little bit and then like goes straight so you have to so you have to like put your hand like this which i think is more na more arrow but it's just not so comfortable so i got some off brand thing i mean these two tubes cost i don't know 10 euros or something very cheap but very more comfortable because you can just hold it like this yeah and the, yeah okay two bottles this one thing i have to say about the bottles i mean these are not the bottles i use during this trip because I throw both of them away so when you are riding under the sun I think the bottle can get sometimes I don't know 45 even to 50 celsius degrees mm, problem is that is one day I was trying to drink some water and it tasted really really weird I mean the water is way more smooth like in a bad way and the plastic smell is just so strong that you think you are definitely definitely poisoned after drinking that water so just be careful when you are riding in that kind of environment i have to confess okay the two bottles i used are very cheap they both cost like one two euros or i bought or i got them for free in some events so the quality is not so good but still even with this like i late ones i don't really trust it uh let me see anything okay yeah plus there's another like small bag kind of food bag just hung there doesn't add a lot of weight or like aero disadvantage so i bought it two days before my trip it's actually used for the powder of the mountain climber or like a boulder for that powder they use to to i don't know like kind of like wash their hand that thing so you can see the inner material is really nice there was a discount so this one i got it for eight euros very cheap on this trip i was putting some food in there but yeah it wasn't much i didn't really use it would i bring it next time probably but anyway you don't have to have it because the Basically whenever, basically whenever I'm having food, I would just, just stop and take a rest and just sitting somewhere and eating my food. I don't really eat food on the go. Okay, now, yeah, let's talk about the stuff in the bags. I'll just put up the camera into another angle so you can see better. Okay, let me just to start with the, with the handlebar bag. can see it's a really big one quite heavy to be honest so let's talk about the issue first it's 
I mean, there's not much of the issue, except it's very heavy. I mean, you can see it's, okay, it's waterproof, and there's a lot of metal parts, which I have no idea what are they for. It's kind of heavy duty, yes. But I just don't understand why it's, why I need this. I mean, okay, I, okay, let me show you what's inside. First, I got a sleeping bag. This is literally the biggest thing I have brought on the trip. And I think the comfort zone is 9 degrees. And the risk zone is minus 9. So basically you can use it from, I don't know, like 5 to 12 degrees. And on this trip, since it's the southern Europe and this year is so hot everywhere, I didn't use this at all. Big, big failure. And uh, would I bring it next time? I really have to think about it. I mean, based on how many nights am I going to stay outside? How am I going to stay outside when it's so cold? I mean, since it's so big, so you you shouldn't bring it just in case. You really have to bring it when you need it. And another thing is just this fleece. I mean, it's a jack wolf skin fleece. Quality is good. It's kind of big, but not that big. So I also didn't use this fleece on this trip, but would I bring this fleece? Definitely. Basically, act, I mean, actually, whenever I'm going, like for travel, I always bring this. This is a really just in case thing, because I mean, since the only like street there I'm having are these like a t-shirt and a short, when it gets to I don't know under 15 degrees, for some reason, I have to have it whenever I'm on the bike or off the bike. Just very essential. Yeah, I'll put this in later. And then another big one, this saddlebag. Okay, I'll show you something first. Yeah. Okay, the reason why I don't like this saddlebag is... Okay, I have to say first, the quality is really, really good. I mean, it has took some bit. I mean, and when I'm riding, it's like swing, it's swing, swing like this all the time for until now, it's over 2,000 kilometers. And it's just, everything still works perfectly. Problems. So you can see, it's fixed, a three point fixed, one is over here. Another two are under the saddle and hanging on the rail. So you can see there's a huge area over here and you can just swing it like this. And when you want to bring this tighter to your saddle, just to make everything tighter and smaller so it wouldn't swing that much. So basically you have to shorten shorten this this stripe. Which is I mean it's doable, but still, even after shortening shorten, shortening it, it's like still a little bit too long so there's no way you can pack it so tight to your saddle that it wouldn't swing and, and for other brand i think you can just to do it i mean this one it's okay i mean it wouldn't break but the problem is sometimes when you pack it really heavy and uh, you are just riding off the set and you are just riding off the saddle you can really feel the spin it swings through the whole back it's just not a good feeling that's the reason why i want to upgrade it but yeah let's go back and talk about what's inside let me get this off one thing i have to say is on this trip, I really packed too much things out in this saddlebag. Even though it's so heavy duty, I just still don't think it's right. So I'll pack less things in this saddle, in this sorry, in this saddlebag, and more things in the frame bag, which I'll talk about later. I'm talking about the upgrade of the frame bag. Okay, first I have two leg warmers. I didn't use them, but if you are going somewhere that you are not sure about the weather, you, you could have used it. And then the arm warmer as well i didn't use it i should i don't know if you can see the color on my on my arms it's not really like doesn't look so well but also very unhealthy so on extremely hot weather definitely wear this like arm warmers or, or should i call it like the sunblock instead of the arm warmer and then it's a safety vest stripe so it just works as a safety vest but it's a strap so it's lighter you just wear it like a like a vest so the car can see you better i didn't use it 
But I think if you are writing the union in France, you have to have it. That's that's the law. That's also the reason why I bought it and brought it. And here the velotos, the shoe cover. It's one of the worst thing when you are writing in the white leather is that your sock is gonna get wet. So with the velo toes, to be honest, I have never used this these shoe covers at all. But based on the material and how tight it is, I'm pretty sure it's gonna work perfectly fine, even if you like a very heavy rainy weather. So that's a little toe, and this WD-40 to clean your bike, didn't use, will bring, because on the trip, kind of in the middle, I broke the rear derailleur. So this guy changed the rear derailleur and also changed the chain. So everything is like new after 400 kilometers, so there's no need to wash the bike. Even though you should, you don't have to. But if you are doing a longer trip, definitely bring something to clean the bike. And yeah, the cycling kit. This is a like an off brand jersey. This is a replica of the of the movie star jersey. I yeah I brought this because I'm I'm going to Spain and I was thinking, okay, I have to take a photo in front of that thing, that church thing of Barcelona with the movie star jersey. And yeah, the, the inner tubes. I brought two pairs, didn't use, even on the last trip, so in total I did this kind of trip, this kind of the trip, I already rode over 2,000 kilometers, never got even one pack, so. And yeah, this is a X-Pad, this is a brand, X-Pad, like, isolation, X-Pad isolation mattress, you can see, what I like about it is the, is the, is the size, not so big, and also very comfortable so basically you have to blow it for 30 seconds and so it's like pure air instead of some isolation mattress that that is that, is, that use material to isolate the to isolate the, the coat so this is full air thing full, full air blow thing comfortable and small not so light but okay it's good enough and two pairs of cycling jerseys so basically I'm wearing one when I'm riding and putting another one in this bag and uh, yeah this is a BB you can see it's super small and it cost me I think 110 euros I do have a cheaper one for 20 euros but first that one is just thicker than this and the air doesn't go in and out as good as this so there's like a lot of moisture inside of the, inside of the BB when you were sleeping and secondly, okay, by the way, it's a black diamond skin called yeah, Twilight BB. Second thing what I really like about it is when I'm sleeping in a BB, I was always worried about there were there would be bugs coming into my mouth and just bite me somehow. So good thing about this is first you can like close the whole thing, but I would never do that because when you are breathing, there's so much like water building inside of the BB. You just can't allow that in, that in such a small bee. And secondly, when you are not really, when you are not completely closing the bee, bee there's a, there's a night, and there, there's a nest, like a bat nest, where you can just breathe through very easily, and it keeps all the bugs outside of the bee. bee. Perfect. That's the main reason why I bought this bee, bee. Even though, since the bee, bee is small and it's kind of like on your body completely. So that nest was on my face when I was sleeping. Even though the bugs can't get in, but the mouth or the, or let's say the needle of the mosquitoes can't get through. So I still got some mosquito bites on my face, but it wasn't so bad. Yeah, and this is the towel. Nothing much to say about it. And that's it. That's basically the things in the big saddlebag. So as you can see, they are mainly the textiles so they are not so heavy quite big and i don't use them very often i mean for example like the sleeping gear just use it more just use it like as much as once a day and uh, also with the also with the clothes you can change it like twice uh yeah this is just normally i just try not to open that during the day or during my ride and now it's the green bag let me get this off Okay, there are two like compartments in this bag. On the left side is very thin, very small, and the main part is on the right side. So on the left the part, the smaller one, 
I have a clock. So normally if I'm going to the supermarket, it's the big chain supermarket like the Lido, like Conrad or or casino, that kind of thing. And normally people just don't care, they just go in with your bike. So like 60-70% of the time I would just do that. Bring my bike into the supermarket, the bike things that come out easy. But sometimes when they really when they really don't allow you to get in you just lock your bike outside for five minutes i mean i think this lock is fine or also when you are sleeping outside you have to lock it somewhere and yeah another interview so the one in the saddlebag they that was that was just a backup thing and this one is really just on this bag if i if i got a puncture pick it out and change it as soon as possible and yeah the tool this is the crank brother tool i think really like it. It's also kind of expensive, but the quality is just superb. Never failed. And you can see it's, I mean, of course it's heavy since it's metal, but it's just small and reliable. Really recommend it. There are tools which is way cheaper, like five, six euros for all the functions or even more. I was using that, but the material of the metal is just so soft and sometimes they would just they will just break themselves and also ruin the screws. Not worth it. And then in the big compartment, pump. So this is a design. I don't really know the model number, but you can definitely find it on the design like, website. I was, I tried to use the small like hand pumps that you have to do this, and. I don't know how can people do that. I mean, with that, I can only I can only pump the tires to like 65, 70 psi. I really can't do it more. And this one is just, even though it's a little bit overpriced, but you can use it as kind of floor pump. You put it onto the floor, and there's let me take this off. And there's this thing, and you just like step. Sorry, oh, you didn't see it. Just take this off. So there's this like thing to stable that, and you put your foot on it to stable at it, and you'll see your like, hand and the weight of the whole body to push it. So with this, I can easily get the tire to 100 PSI, or even more without any problem. And then I have this, it's just like a very thin jacket, sort of waterproof, not really. So because I, I do have a waterproof jacket, it's a, or like, I do have a rain jacket, but the reason why I didn't bring that is I'm thinking when the rain is really that heavy, would I would I still ride it? Probably not. I mean, it's not a race. It's not worth it to just get a cold. So this is, this is good enough for like downhill when the wind is kind of cold. It's really helpful. I never got a problem with that. Even though it's such a thin layer, or also when it starts to rain for the first couple of like two three minutes, it can prevent the rain a little bit, and then you will find a shelter shelter and stay there. Yeah, the last thing, really, really recommend it, water bladder. So this one holds to three liters. And first, the only issue I have with it, since it's in this bag and you are drinking like on near the near the Anubar area, so you don't really know how much water is in there. You will know when there's only like 100 milliliter left. When you are sucking it, there's a lot of air coming with the water. But other than that, you have no idea how much water are left, so you can't really plan your water usage. That's why, like, besides of that, I also brought two water bottles. But, yeah, the advantage of this, first, it holds a lot of water, it fits basically all the bag you have, since it's just a soft bag itself. And uh, also, it's really easy to drink the water. You can, I mean, as I showed you earlier, that water tube runs along my top tube, and just go in from go near my garmin and whenever i'm drumming just on the go i can just pick pick up that nozzle and start drinking and another thing is i realized in this really hot weather so even when the sun even the sun is shining on this black bag but the water inside or the temperature in the bag is not really that high so we are drinking the first 20 30 milliliters in that tube in that tube was hot but then afterwards the water is kind of cool and there's no like, poisoning issue like the ones I had with the water bottles. And um, yeah, that's basically all the kit I have. And also the clothes I have over here is just one t-shirt and one short. 
this is the only normal, the normal clothes I have on this trip. And since I wasn't planning to spend a lot of time off the saddle, so it, it's all I need actually. Yeah, that's, that's, I think that's it for all the equipment. If you still have any questions, just leave in the comments down below. And whether that's about the equipment or about the mindset, about the route, and anything, I can answer you, I will do that. Just comment and please share this video. Thank you.